<clears throat> Alright guys, what's going on? And I'm going to be taking a look at Hatchet 3, directed by B.J. McDonough and written by Adam Green. Of course, this is the first Hatchet movie to not be directed by Adam Green. Hatchet 3 takes place right after the events of Hatchet 2. Mary Beth blows Victor Crowley's head off with a damn shotgun. Victor regenerates. They have a little tussle. She knocks Victor into that huge-ass chainsaw from Part 2. Rips his shit in half. She grabs his scalp, she goes to a police station, and part three begins. She tells the cops her story, the cops go to Honey Island Swamp to investigate it, and all chaos ensues. Victor regenerates and goes on a bloody rampage. That's pretty much Hatchet 3. No different than the first two Hatchets. It's still fun, it's still a fun movie, but, you know, the repetitiveness of, these, of the series is now starting to really, really show... And, you know, when you watch all three of these movies back to back, you really do start to see like a, a repetitive, a repetitive streak go on. It's okay. She escapes. <laughs> she finds help. She goes back. She escapes. She finds help. She goes back. That's pretty much what the movies, pretty much what these movies are. But in this one, she escapes, goes to the cops. They think she committed all the murders. They lock her ass up. Then one of the cops' ex-wife goes in there, who's a reporter. She's like, I know how to stop Victor Crowley. And then her and the deputy, they go to find Victor Crowley's ashes' his father. <clears throat> Sorry. They go to get the ashes of Victor's father, who is being held by his great uh, nephew, played by Sid Haig, who in a five-minute hilarious cameo where Sid Haig is just fucking hysterical. No. One of the positives in this movie, speaking of Sid Haig, is actually Sid Haig. His cameo in this movie is fantastic. He's great. I love Sid Haig. If I have to give any praise to any of the Rob Zombie movies, it's whatever. It's, it's the ones that have Sid Haig or the ones that save that, because Sid Haig is great. And he plays like, he literally plays like this old, you know, this old southern coot who is not in touch with reality, thinks that... Ten years ago was yesterday, and is still stuck in the segregation era because, like, you leave the colored outside because you know the deputy's black, and he's like, you leave that colored outside. So yeah, Sid Haig is funny, he's good, and you know there's other some characters that are good too. You know, Perry Shen, who was in the first two movies, returns again in this one. Of course, Perry Shen plays the the brothers Sean and Justin, who get offed in gruesome fashion in the Hatchet in the two Hatchet movies. He comes back as a different character named Andrew, who's actually a paramedic, and third time's a charm because Perry Shen survives a Hatchet movie. And his character and his character is actually pretty funny because he points out the obvious to everyone, and they just like ignore him. And he's like, "We should go." They ignore him. We should hide. They ignore him. They walk into like Victor Crowley's house space, and he's like. Okay, guys, this is really not a good place to go hide. We should go somewhere else. So, yeah, I like Andrew. I like Perry Shen in this movie. I found him funny in the first two movies, and I find him funny and good in this. I think he's a very underrated, funny guy. So, Perry Shen, positive for me. Um, we get <laughs> Derek Mears, who played Jason in the Friday the 13th 2009 reboot. He's in this movie. Play the guy who's called Tyler Hose, who's like this SWAT leader. He's leading this charge to go into the swamp. And with him is Zach Gillian, who was the kid from Gremlins, who was actually the sheriff. Who was the sheriff. And, of course, he is joining in this escapade of law to go track down and kill Victor Crowley. Instead, Victor Crowley kills all of them in gruesome fashion. Oh, you know, there's this... You know, in the Gordon's movie... Like in the first two movies, the gore is, you know, over the top, it's brutal. Um, and it's, you no, know, it's fun to see Victor just dismember people. You know, there's this one scene where he, like, pulls these this guy's arms off, and then he just, like, with his foot, just plants his face into the mud. Uh, there's this other kill where he uses the, uh, uh, Victor uses a defibrillator to pretty much... Cause a man's head to explode, which was cool to see. Um, there's near the end of the movie, you get this really cool, you know, really cool suspense scene going on where three characters are locked inside of a boat, and then and then and there's this big hole right in the doorway, and two characters go near that hole, and Victor just tears them to shreds. It was pretty fun. It was fun seeing all that stuff. 
Um, you know, Danielle Harris once again returned as Mary Beth, and she's fun. She's cool. You know, she gets to she gets to uh, play Mary Beth into that more of that white trash thing. Well, we're well, starting to show shades of the white trash, and she comes from a white trash family. She's starting to show some of that white trashiness. You know, telling people "fuck you," "fuck this," "fuck you," which is which is pretty fun. And like I said, Caroline Williams from Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. She played Stretch. She's in this movie playing, you know, uh, Gremlins Kid's ex-wife. And she's like I said, she's a reporter. She knows Victor's history, and and she knows how to stop Victor. And that and that's where her, you know, her and you know Mary Beth team up to go try and find uh, the ashes and all that stuff, which ultimately leads to the climax. And I'm not going to give away the climax because just watch the movie. So that's that. Um, like I said, this is the first movie not directed by Adam Green, and the direction's fine. I like it. It's good. He do, Adam Green does the writing, and this movie, I actually think this is actually the funniest out of all the Hatchet movies, because this movie really pokes fun of itself. Just the opening uh, scene, uh, one, of the, one of the earliest scenes is where... Uh, the sheriff is talking to uh, Mary Beth, and she she recounts the story to him, and he's just like, "That is the most contrived thing I've ever heard." You know, poking fun at the at the Hatchet movies. Um, then there's this one character who keeps pointing out who's a, who's a cop, and his whole thing's like he's scared of where he is, and he's like, "Do you know where we are? I've only been here for three years, and I'm and I'm scared shitless." And then he like he sees like a, a pair of balls on a tree branch, and he's like. Balls should don't belong over there. Then in the background, you see some guy throwing up, and he's like, "That guy knows what's up." So yeah, and like I said, and like I said, Perry Shen's character also provides a lot of funny moments, as well as Sid Ca- Sid Haig's cameo, which also provides good moments of his own. So yeah, overall, and of course, the design of Victor Crowley in this movie I think is done much much better. And Kane Hodder as Victor Crowley is has it puts on a much more better performance in this movie also, because he gives Victor more rage and more brutality. So yeah, overall I like Hatchet Three. Um, if I'm gonna rate it, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it an eight point five out of ten. I like it more than one and two, you know, and it's also a good closure to the original Hatchet trilogy. <laughs> So yeah, 8.5 out of 10. And now I await the fourth installment to this movie called Victor Crowley, which I will be reviewing very, very shortly. Anyway, that's all I got to say about the original trilogy for Hatchet. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like professional wrestling, subscribe to my other channel, for which I'll provide a link for in the description box below. Thank you very much and have a good one.